Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, it's part 19 of the Project Kit Build. Time for something a little bit different. So we're stripping the engine. First part off, as you can see, the cooling fan. Subject of many a debate on Facebook and on YouTube, we're fitting the fan the wrong way around. There's a couple of easy ways to remember. One is the fan, the genuine ones, are stamped on the side, which says engine side. Uh, but two, I also find that the fan's the correct way round when you can put your fingers behind it when it's installed in the car and you can pull the fan blades towards you because you can't do that if it's the other way around. So we're just re removing the ancillaries here. First part off was the water pump. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to move the distributor here. Um, so all I'm doing here is the engine's going to get painted. So I've just marked that with a hammer and chisel, just a couple of a little notch in the block, little notch on the distributor, just so when we reassemble it a bit, or when we put it back together, it's going to be much quicker because we can just reset it to where it was before, and uh, the timing will be roughly about correct. Uh, same with the rotor arm. So again, the rotor arm can go in multiple positions. So just marked with a bit of paint. So when we do put it back together, like I say, it's just about saving time. I appreciate you can do the static timing on it, get it done pretty quickly. Um, but we'll probably save 10, 15 minutes by being able to set it up where it was before. Next up, just removing the thermostat housing. So you have to be careful with that because quite often the studs, the nuts or the bolts seize into that housing so because they're steel bolts going into an aluminium housing you get what they call galvanic reaction and the two metals actually corrode together so uh, you generally always have issues there but luckily on this head I assume it hadn't been apart very long ago it come apart quite nicely just removing the valve train now uh, and that will allow us then to remove the head bolts, get to the point where we can take the head off. So head bolts should come off really in the reverse order that you tighten them up. So um, generally it's opposite ends. So when you tighten up, I think you start from the middle and move outwards. And when you remove, start from the outside and move inwards. Just pointing out here the rocker assembly there. There should be a screw-in plug that goes in that second rocker post. That's it there. Um, and that's just where it's drilled to let our oil flow through the rocker shaft. Uh, the actual grub screw that goes in there was missing. So that's a real concern actually, so when it was last rebuilt, was that missing when it was rebuilt or um, has that been just left out as it's been taken apart? Just looking down at the cylinder block now with the head removed, as you can see there's kind of a dark patch, we've seen cylinders 2 and 3. So it looks like the head gasket's not blown between those cylinders, but it was certainly leaking between the two. If you compare that, looking at between cylinders one and two, three and four, you can see a nice silver gasket line between the two. So we just pulled a gasket out now. Just lifting it off the studs, obviously. We will we'll remove the studs just to aid cleaning up the block. And then just inspecting inside those bores there, checking for a lip on the bores. No detectable lip, which is good. Like I say, it's a 40,000 mile engine, so you wouldn't expect that. Unfortunately, we did notice later on that with the pistons right at the bottom, cylinders two and three, there was some light surface corrosion uh, sort of midway down the bore, and that was probably where there was a bit of moisture in there. Just looking at the head, so when Mark bought the engine, the guy did say 
uh, it had a modified head on it and certainly seems to be true actually so just looking in the inlet and exhaust here that has definitely been ported so there's been some head work done there the inlet tracks and exhaust tracks are much larger than they would be on a standard head so it's a good starting point nice to find a modified head just hopefully it's all been done properly so just moving on now we'll just check the size of those inlet and exhaust valves so without measuring actually just looking at that I can see they are bigger than standard if you look at the inlet and exhaust valves in the middle they're almost touching each other so just initial measurement without taking the head apart looks like those inlet valves are about 35 36 mil and the exhausts are 29 mil 29 maybe 30 but they're definitely larger than standard so again that's all good as long as it's been done properly so fingers crossed I think the plan is we just clean this head up clean the valves up lap them all back in again get it skimmed get it refaced and put it back on the car it's also an 11 stud head by the looks of it so the block's not drilled for 11 studs but yep definitely 11 stud head and it certainly looked like looking at that head gasket and on closer inspection that head gasket was leaking between cylinders two and three so just moving on we're removing the studs out of the block here makes it a lot easier to clean up the face of the block but also we're going to replace those studs as well so they quite often get overlooked the studs so you know with the age of most minis the studs are not stretch studs but it's probably you know had the head or head gaskets replaced at least once uh, no studs corrode they get worn out and one of the most important factors in preventing the head gasket from failing is making sure the head is torqued down accurately and if you use an old studs that's just not possible so we won't go whole hog won't be going with ARP studs here just because they are very expensive for a road car but we will use mini spares uh, I think they are competition head studs the same as I used on PL, they're a good set of studs and uh, they'll be installed nicely so yeah just pointing out there the blow in the head gasket hadn't completely blown but there was definitely soot between the two cylinders so definitely a bit of gas transfer between cylinders two and three there so just removing the starter motor and a few more ancillaries there the breather really just to get them out of the way because the block is going to be cleaned up and painted now we're not actually going to strip the engine down much further aside from taking the timing cover off uh, that's really just so we can paint it up I thought it'd be a good idea to inspect the chain and tensioner and see what they're like taking in mind it's only done 40,000 miles I was really tempted just to leave things as they are um, certainly you'll see in a moment when you look at the gasket on the timing cover it's in very good condition uh, but when I looked at the tensioner there was a, a lot of wear in the tensioner in itself so it was worth doing so Mark's ordered I think it's a mini spares Evo tensioner kit so it comes with a new tensioner gasket uh, and an Evo chain whatever an Evo chain is I think it's just an upgrade of the standard simplex chain decided not to go duplex again it's a road car it's not going to be running a huge amount of power hey guys, so a bit of homework and, um, a bit of kit work in yeah, my just garage a bit rather overkill, than Mark's. really um so um you'd have seen in the video started stripping down the engine on kit i do apologize because we i missed a few bits we're taking off the timing gear and that sort of thing um and just stripping down the head so 
as you can see, we've taken all the studs out of the head, um, taken the studs out for the rockers, uh, and now I'm just going to take the valves out, and we'll inspect all of them, and I'm going to send the head away for a skim, but it's only going to have a very, very light skim, um, uh, really as little as they can do, because we don't want to increase the pressure, uh, compression ratio, want to keep it um, as it is, so... It's really just to reface it, unless it's warped or something like that, which I don't think it will be. Uh, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem, but it definitely wants facing. Um, it looked like the head gasket had probably gone uh, very slightly between cylinders two and three here. So there was a bit of a mark on the head gasket and you can see it on the head there as well. So, you know, just... Um, it's probably the sensible thing to get it uh, to get it skimmed anyway, and I think we'll get this uh, face here refaced as well because you can see it's got some lever marks in it where I think they probably levered the manifold off in the past. Um, so as you can see, giving it a quick clean already, done a leakage test on the valves just as they are at the moment, so I filled them up level with uh, duck oil. Uh, just sprayed up into the inlets like I did on PL just to see which ones were leaking. Um, none were leaking excessively, but there were a few that were leaking. So we'll get them out see what they look like. Really important to make sure we keep these valves in the right order. So we'll lay them out here and then later on I'll, I'll put them in a bit of card like I did with the push rods just to make sure everything stays in the same place. Uh, my valve spring compressor is not ideal. It's a little bit too small. Um, so I have to fit almost like a little adapter on it. So just as they come out, all we're going to do is we just, now the valve spring is off. Just with the valve low in the head, we'll just wiggle it side to side and see how much play there is in the valve stem. There should be a little bit, but not too much. That feels fine. And then we can just have a look around the seat of the valve to make sure there's no heavy pitting or the valve's not starting to burn. And then inside the valve seat itself, uh, again, for heavy pitting, burning, damage. And cracks as well. You get cracks between the two valves sometimes. So this head is a little bit interesting because obviously it looks like it's been ported and polished. Uh, it definitely has bigger valves in it but it only has single valve springs and the headwork, although it looks like it's done to a reasonably good standard, certainly doesn't look like the, the combustion chambers have been matched, you know, for exact CC. Um, so yeah, quite a bonus to find out it has got a modified head on it, but I don't think it's the best. I just have to have a look at that one in a little bit more detail because it's it's picking up right on the end. I don't quite know why. 
gets stuck there. So whether it's slightly bent. Or whether there's a bit of burring or something on the end there. Don't know, shouldn't do that though. Obviously a little bit disappointed by that. Not quite sure what the issue is at this stage. But uh, it certainly means I don't think it will ju be just a straightforward skim and refresh. Uh, it's looking like at the moment like there'll be more work involved. That that valve's obviously got a problem and it's trying to work so out what caused the issue. A standard head, trying to make sure we don't uh, build the issue back into the new engine. An automatic. You don't usually find them modified. But that's measuring 29.36 for exhaust. Thirty five point six for inlets. So yeah, larger valves in there as well. Head's had some porting work on it. It's uh it's not the best. I've seen better. Um but nice little bonus that it has been done. And it's not too bad. As you can see, where it's been stood actually, it's gone corroded on the inlet ports. So I must have had a bit of moisture in there, which is a bit disappointing. And you'll also notice it's got valve guide oil seals on. Oh no, it hasn't. No. I thought yeah, they had them on all of them, but it hasn't. It's just on the inlets, it's got them fitted. So I think most of the time now is you fit all late. Right, so just clean that up a little bit. Bit of a comparison test. So this is the good one. And there's a little bit of play in the collet, but not a great deal. This is a bad one. It's probably got two or three times as much play. And it's, uh, so it's actually worn a sharp edge on there. Get the vernier calipers out. Make sure there's zeroed. About point eight. As I play two. One mil. Mm, what about the top crown? Four mil. Three point six. Lots and lots of movement in that one. Only a little bit in that one. The real temptation is just to um, put it back together, isn't it? But what's going to happen potentially? It's going to, uh, that collet's going to slip out, come out at some stage, and it's going to drop an inlet valve, which, yeah, that'll be pretty disastrous, won't it? <laughs>